Hi, thanks for clicking on this thumbnail. And today I'm going to go through on how to download your IDE and get started with Flutterweb. I have a new mic and let's get started. Currently, Flutterweb is in beta, but that means is it is more than enough for you to play around with Flutterweb. First of all, we need to meet the requirements. So you have to install the Flutter SDK on your platform. If you have not, you can click on the video of how to install Flutter on your platform. And secondly, you have to install Chrome before we get started. We are going to go through on how to get started with Flutter Web. So I'm going to introduce you to IDE and Visual Studio Code and your first Flutter Web project. If you don't know any of this, then this tutorial is for you. That's why it's called the Newbie Programmer Guide. Meaning, if you have no or very little experience in programming, then this tutorial is for you. First of all, what is an IDE? IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. That means it is a document software to write code but cooler. Meaning that it is like your Google Docs for writing documents. IDE is your Google Docs to write code. And IDE has typically three main functions and more, but these I think are the three main functions for a beginner developer would appreciate. So first, you are going to write code. Second, you're going to create app, awesome stuff. And lastly, IDEs are meant for you to debug. So in creating code or apps or web apps or whatever, you're going to use an IDE to debug on errors that you'll find when you create a project. And out there, there's tons of IDEs. So you have all of these awesome looking icons, but we are going to focus on one, which is Visual Studio Code. Why Visual Studio Code? Because it's something that, that I'm very familiar about. Visual Studio Code is an IDE that's created by, guess, guess who? created Visual Studio Code or which big company created Visual Studio Code. If you look at it, it looks like Microsoft and you're correct. Microsoft created Visual Studio Code and it's one of the best IDEs I've ever put in so far. And yeah, it has debugging built in Git. Wow. So if you were from the previous video, you know Git, you have to use the terminal, but then Visual Studio Code actually have its own inbuilt Git stuff. And you also have some extensions. So let's go download uh, Visual Studio Code. Just download according to your operating system. I am going to go through on how to download Visual Studio Code. So let's accept the agreement and make sure you read everything. You make sure you read everything, right? So we're just going to skip. And you don't really have to mess around. But there's one thing that I want you to focus on, which I'm going to explain later which is add to path. In a previous video, I talked about path and actually Visual Studio Code can be opened by a path, which I'm going to tell you in a later time. So press next and then we're just going to install it. <laughs> this is a little dance when I wait for something to download. <laughs> All right, once you're done with downloading Visual Studio Code, click finish. And you will see Visual Studio Code open up, all right? And this is just an IDE. And it looks like a very cool interface, like, oh my God, why is there so many things? So in Visual Studio Code, you have a lot of things where you have the File Explorer, the Search tab, the Git or Source Control tab, the Debugger, and at the same time, the extension. I need you guys to download the extension right here. Search for the Flutter extension and then you download it. This will give you shortcuts for you to make your Flutter development so much faster. And at the same time, you also can explore and download certain things. So for me, I will download the material theme and the material icon theme. Earlier, I talked about the path and Visual Studio Code. Actually, you can open Visual Studio Code programmatically using PowerShell or your terminal. Open PowerShell and type in the word code and you press enter 
it actually opens Visual Studio Code. Wow, that's amazing. And the thing is, you can actually open a folder using Visual Studio Code. So I'm opening Linktree clone, which is in the link on top. And you could see it opens the folder for me with the Visual Studio Code IDE. That's pretty amazing. Another thing to take note is that you actually have terminal inside IDE of Visual Studio Code. If you look up here, there's this word terminal, press new terminal, and this is your Windows PowerShell. Isn't that amazing? So you can do your terminal stuff without opening Windows PowerShell. Windows without opening Windows. Oh my god, it's so hard to point. Without opening Windows PowerShell. That's amazing! Now, to create a new project with web support, what you need to do is to run these commands inside your PowerShell or inside Visual Studio Code. Let me go through what this different command means. Flutter Channel Beta. Flutter Web has many branches. Master, Dev, Beta, Stable, and many more actually. And Flutter Web actually exists in Beta. That's why we have to change our channel or master to beta. Next, Flutter upgrade. Simply meaning that we are just going to upgrade the version of Flutter if we were to have a old version of Flutter. And lastly, Flutter config enable web. This means we are telling Flutter to enable web support, which we will be able to create awesome Flutter web applications in our development. When you run Flutter channel beta, it will look something like this. Don't worry, it's not an error. It is just downloading. While we are waiting, let me sing you a song. Many problems, guys. Collect alone. Once you have done switching your branch to beta, then you have to do Flutter upgrade. So let's do that. Now we are still gonna wait. Ooh, oh my god. <laughs> Once you are done with Flutter upgrade, it will look something like this. Welcome to Flutter. Oh, I feel so welcome. Oh, and after that, you could see that it's already updated and you can see the version. So it does a bit of like Flutter Doctor in the background to see whether you are doing okay. All right. So next up, we are going to enable Flutter web support, which is this command, Flutter config enable web. All right, let's run it. Now it have set the enable web to true. And you have to restart any open editors for them to read new settings, including PowerShell and Visual Studio Code. So you just close it and reopen it. Amazing grace, how sweet the song. Oh, and we're done. Now we are going to get started with Flutter Web. We are going to create our own Flutter Web project. Usually, if you don't have an IDE, you will have to run Flutter create my app inside your PowerShell terminal and then we'll create a Flutter project or folder inside your desktop or wherever you want it to be and then you have to change directory inside your app folder and if you want to run the web app you have to use this Flutter run dash D Chrome this means you are running your project in Chrome so Flutter run means you're running the project dash D means which device and you chose Chrome as your device. However, however, the IDE actually handles everything here. That's amazing. You don't have to use PowerShell. You just have to use Visual Studio Code just by Control Shift P. And this will open a window that has its own commands, but readable for us to understand. One command is Flutter New Project and it will ask you what project you want to do. So I'm going to say link tree underscore clone. Press enter. They will ask you where do you want your Flutter app to be created. I will normally choose desktop for me to create any Flutter projects because I could see the physical file inside my desktop. Select that desktop as your folder and let's create. And this will magically create your link tree clone Flutter project using Visual Studio Code. So you have to wait for a while to turn. Nay, from sky, 
once you have created your flutter project it might look something like this don't worry if you have a lot of uh, problems or you have a lot of ray stuff coming out it's just visual studio code trying to analyze the different files at once to see whether there's any errors and in the end there is no errors in order for us to run our flutter web project you have to go to debug and click start debugging make sure that chrome web javascript is being selected it may take a while for it to load but don't worry oh it's starting to open oh my god <laughs> Once it finished loading, it will look something like this. Your first Flutter project will look like a counter app. That means you press the increment button at the bottom right corner and it will just increase the number here. And there you go. That is your first Flutter project. So that's it for today's video. If you like it, please like it and subscribe for more Flutter web tutorials. If you like my mic, leave a comment down below all right hope you guys have a nice day and merry uh, christmas <laughs> bye bye